I can't tell you how happy I am to actually be stood here now shooting something after a nightmare journey having to detour completely uh, and then think of somewhere to go for the right conditions because it's really misty up here it's absolutely perfect for the woodland and I've just framed up a shot I absolutely love it so if I get nothing else today at least I've got something I'll actually feel happy for going out today it's um it's kind of my second choice, but that's now become my first choice, I think. I just looked for something a little easier to start off with, and I found that this tree trunk and the tree here with the yellow leaves, actually just those two, pretty much on their own, give it a really nice shot. My kind of image, I absolutely love it. So that's what I've done, is to compose it just for those two main elements. So I've moved in a little closer with the tripod, and this is a vertical shot, and, and just enough space. I've just given enough space around the edges uh, so it's not too tight. The main reason I'm drawn to this is just the light. Obviously the colours are absolutely fantastic, but it's the light. There's, there's enough mist here of low cloud um, that it's just softening everything. It's just adding that atmosphere. So that's that little bit of atmosphere, I think is coming through that image with those autumn colours. And that is what's really attracting me. Now, I don't know how long this is going to last, which is why I just wanted to get something, something in the bag. Um, so live view focusing, which I do. Uh, for most of my landscape and macro photography and then I just zoom in and I go to times five and then I just focus manually and my focus point I'm just focusing on the foreground tree the wider aperture of f5.6 just because sometimes I like the effect because you see always my camera bag in the background of my videos because I just leave it strewn in random places um, but yeah I, sometimes with a wider aperture for woodland shots I like it because it just it kind of it diffuses the background a bit more, which sometimes I think just um, makes it a bit more interesting, maybe adds a bit more intrigue at times rather than just everything being pin sharp. And I think if it's misty, that wider aperture actually can work quite well like that because it kind of helps add to the atmosphere with that that receding mist. So you might be wondering about filters. Am I gonna use any filters? Not for this shot, no filters at all. Now, I might use a polarizing filter sometimes in woodlands, but what I find sometimes is that it can actually, you know, take away from that atmosphere. It can cut through, maybe cut through the mist too much and get rid of all the reflections. And sometimes I think it's just nice, almost when it just looks a little bit overexposed, maybe there's a little bit of glare on the surface of the leaves. And I think it just helps to maintain that atmosphere particularly in the mist so for this shot no filters at all which is pretty much what I had in mind when I set it up as I was driving past I just kind of I just caught a glimpse of this patch of woodland and a stone wall and everything just it looked good from the road so I thought let's just try try it do something different I know the other woodland but this one I've never been in here in my life before This is just about perfect. I've just come across this. It's absolutely incredible. Um, it's, a, it's a huge beech tree, but it's kind of on its side. It's sort of grown at an angle. And all those roots at the bottom with all the moss on and the leaves just nicely arranged on there, just the right amount of leaves as well. Just the overall scene. We've got that just really dominant in the scene, but then surrounded by autumn leaves and that mist in the background as well. This is just absolutely stunning. I think there are some shots in there for 50 millimeter lens, but initially when I saw this, I just thought wide angle. So I'm gonna put on the wide angle 24 millimeter lens. One of the difficulties with composing this shot has been there's like a tree to the left behind and there's like a bit of a mound as well and for where I wanted to be uh, both those were encroaching a little bit on the background I just sort of find that distracting I'm trying to get the, the tree nice and clear so I've had to come over here um, enough to the side 
so that you can't see those distracting elements behind. I do think um, it's better overall, but that composition would have been slightly better without those distractions. But it's often weighing things up. It's a catch-22 situation. So I've settled on this composition, and also I'm just playing around a bit with um, you know with 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 the composition mainly in terms of um, tilting how much how much foreground do I want, how much of the leaves at the bottom of the frame, how much of the, the trees and the, the, the sky with the mist, how much do I want. And quite surprisingly for me, what I found is when I tilted upwards and had more of the trees and that mist, I actually, I think I actually preferred the shot, which was interesting. <laughs> It's got really, really dark now. Anyway, I'm now gonna try a polarizing filter for this shot, because the reason is I think with this scene, I've got so much foreground orange autumn leaves that I might be able to just bring that out a little more to give more saturation and color. And with it being in the foreground, I think that might work in the image. I'm actually gonna show you exactly how this works, because I've just got some new filters not so long ago, um, Nissi filters which is supposed to be very good and this will be the first time I've used any of my Nissi filters. This is going to be fun. I'm going to show you exactly how this goes on the lens because I found a lot of videos that didn't seem to explain it very, very well. So I've got my 24mm lens at the moment with a 58mm screw thread. So first of all, I need to put on my adapter. So this is a 58mm Nissi uh, screw thread filter adapter. So that goes on first. And then it's time for the filter. So it's going to go this way, and then we're simply going to screw this on to that adapter that we just put on. There we go. And just sort of tighten it up a little bit, but not too much. The idea of polarizing filters, of course, is that you can rotate it to give the desired effect to change colour saturation, reduce glare and reflection. So with these type of filters, um, you've actually got a little wheel here. So you just turn this little wheel and it actually rotates the filter, which is fantastic. So you can move that wheel either way, rotate the filter to get it as you want it. I'm not being sponsored by Nissi or anything. I just did some research. I wanted to get some proper filters because I've never really used proper filters since I went digital for landscape photography because I concentrate much more on wildlife. Uh, we did some research online. They were a bit more affordable but seemed to be really good quality. Uh, they are glass filters so I need to take more care because I'm prone to dropping things and damaging things. So I need to be really care careful with the filters. But I think already I can see a difference because one of the things is they don't give as much colour cast so they're not supposed to. And I think I I can see that already just from taking those shots there. That was just such a good photography shoot. I thoroughly enjoyed it today. Come to a brand new location, good conditions, but no idea what to expect. And I've come away with a couple of compositions that I really, really like. If you've used any Nissi filters, maybe polarizing filter, then do let me know how you get on. This was the first time I've used it today and I could, I'm sure I could see the difference. Really looking forward to seeing those images on the screen. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna go and do a recce in this woodland now. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.